who was St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, the man who brought Christianity to the Emerald Isle, the legend who drove the snakes away. To understand the life of St. Patrick, we need to go back to the 5th century, to a time when the Roman Empire had fallen and Europe was in turmoil. It was in this world that St. Patrick was born, not in Ireland, but in Britain, in a place that is now Wales. His birth name was Maywin Suckett, and he was the son of a Christian deacon. When he was around 16 years old, Maywin was kidnapped by Irish raiders and taken to Ireland as a slave. He spent six years in captivity working as a shepherd and living in isolation. During the time of Maywin's captivity, Ireland was a society divided into many small kingdoms, constantly at war with each other. One of the outcomes of this constant warfare was the capture and enslavement of people from rival kingdoms. The practice of slavery was not uncommon in ancient Ireland it's likely that Maywin was captured as part of a raid on his home village. Slaves were valuable assets and could be used for a variety of purposes, including labor, trade, and even a form of currency. It's important to note that the term slave in ancient Ireland is not necessarily the same as the brutal slavery of later centuries. Many Irish slaves, not all, but many were actually more like indentured servants and could earn their freedom after a certain period of service. In any case, Maywin's kidnapping and enslavement was the traumatic event, an experience that would shape the rest of his life and set him on a path that would eventually lead to becoming one of the most important figures in Irish history. It was during his time in Ireland as a slave he turned to Christianity, finding solace in prayer and meditation. He believed that God had a plan for him, and that he was destined to bring the light of Christ to the pagan Irish. After six years, Maywin managed to escape from captivity and fled back to Britain. We don't know if he actually escaped or if he worked his way out. He joined a monastery and became a priest, taking the name Patrick. But he would not forget about Ireland. He had a vision in which he heard the voice of the Irish people calling him back to their land. Patrick saw this as a divine calling, and he set out on a mission to convert the Irish people to Christianity. He spent years studying Irish language and culture, and he developed a deep understanding of the people he wanted to serve. Patrick's mission was not an easy one. He faced opposition from local rulers, who saw him as a threat to their power. He also faced competition from other Christian missionaries, who were already active in Ireland. But Patrick persevered and he eventually gained a following among Irish people. He supposedly used the shamrock as a symbol of the Holy Trinity, and he preached a message of hope and forgiveness. Patrick's legacy in Ireland is still felt today. He's credited with bringing Christianity to the country. In his feast day, March 17th is a national holiday. But Patrick's influence goes beyond Ireland. He celebrated around the world as a symbol of Irish culture and heritage. And yet the real Patrick remains shrouded in mystery. Many of the stories and legends associated with him are more fiction than fact. Did he really drive the snakes away from Ireland? Did he really use a shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity? Questions may never be answered, but you have some idea.
According to Irish lore, St. Patrick rid the Emerald Isle of serpents, driving them into the sea. But it seems that myth may have arisen from a too literal interpretation of an ancient 6th century text called the Dinnishal. The text tells of a sect called the Gromkloch, who used the symbolism of the snake and in time became a powerful force in Ireland whose followers use the snake as their symbol. It may be the real story behind St. Patrick driving out the snakes. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Irish snakes and do a speed round of mispronunciations. I apologize. Kromkuch, which translates to bloody crescent, was a pagan site of worship near the village of Ballymagorn in County Cavan. At its entrance stood a large megalithic stone surrounded by twelve smaller upright lintels, much like Stonehenge in England. The Kramkuch cult were known for the bloodthirsty practices, with the faithful expected to sacrifice their firstborn in his honor to assure a successful harvest. The annual slaughter took place on the pagan feast of Samhain on November 1st each year. If you want to know a little bit more about that, go back and look up my History of Samhain video. Historian Thomas Moriarty explains that St. Patrick marched on the site with a band of well-armed missionaries, mocked its demons, blessed the place afterwards, and destroyed the site. A major battle took place, but Patrick and his followers emerged victorious. Though the people feared retribution from the pagan god, it never came to pass, and from that point onward the cult's grip was effectively broken in Ireland. The event is recorded in the 6th century Dinesha text, also known as the Book of Linsta. According to Brendan Scott of Cavan County Museum, the Kramkloch idol is still in existence. The Kilkluggen stone is part of the original idol, which would have stood in the center, covered in gold. Surrounding it were 12 smaller stones covered in silver. Scott believes the original site of the battle was at the top of the hill near Ballyconnell in West Cavan, called Derrygrath. One thing is clear, though, St. Patrick's impact on history and the culture is undeniable. And his story continues to fascinate people around the world. While St. Patrick's Day may be celebrated around the world today, it's important to remember that it all began in Ireland. On March 17, 1631, the Church of Ireland declared St. Patrick's Day an official feast day. But it wasn't until the 18th century that the holiday began to take on more of the secular traditions that we associate with it today. The decision to declare St. Patrick's Day as an official feast day of the Church of Ireland was a significant one. This was a recognition of the important role that St. Patrick had played in Irish history and culture. The date, March 17th, was chosen to commemorate the anniversary of St. Patrick's death, which is to believe to have occurred on that day in the year 461 AD. In the early celebrations of St. Patrick's Day, the holiday was primarily a religious observance. Irish families would attend church in the morning, gather together for a large feast in the afternoon. This feast was typically a hearty meal of bacon and cabbage, and was often accompanied by music, dancing, and other forms of merriment. 
Over time, however, the celebration of St. Patrick's Day in Ireland began to take on more of the secular traditions, and a parade, for example, was introduced to Ireland in the late 18th century by Irish soldiers who were serving in the British Army. These parades were a way for Irish soldiers to show off their Irish pride and connect with their homeland while serving abroad. In the 19th and 20th centuries, St. Patrick's Day in Ireland continued to evolve. The holiday became more commercialized with businesses using the holiday as an opportunity to sell Irish-themed merchandise and souvenirs. At the same time, the holiday also became more political, with Irish nationalists using St. Patrick's Day as a way to promote Irish independence and to celebrate Irish culture and identity. While St. Patrick's Day has been celebrated in Ireland since the 17th century, it took some time for the holiday to gain popularity in other parts of the world. One of the earliest recorded St. Patrick's Day parades took place in New York City in 1762. Again, those Irish soldiers were serving in the British Army. They marched through the streets of New York wearing green and carrying Irish flags. It's worth noting, though, that the first recorded St. Patrick's Day celebration in the United States actually took place in Florida, not New York. The celebration occurred in 1601, when a group of Spanish explorers landed in what's now St. Augustine, Florida, on March 17th. And they celebrated the day with a feast. In the following centuries, Boston, in particular, became known for its lively St. Patrick's Day festivities. First recorded St. Patrick's Day celebration in Boston took place in 1737, when a group of Irish immigrants held a small dinner party in honor of the holiday. But it was really that parade in New York that helped popularize the holiday in the United States, this parade, which was organized by the Society of Friendly Sons of St. Patrick, became an annual tradition in New York in the early 19th century. Over time, other cities and towns across the country began to hold their own St. Patrick's Day parades, and the holiday became an important celebration of Irish-American culture. In the mid-19th century, the Irish began to use St. Patrick's Day as a way to celebrate their heritage and culture as well. This was during a time of great political upheaval in Ireland, as many were fighting for independence from the British rule. St. Patrick's Day became a way to celebrate that national identity and pride. One of the most Iconic symbols of St. Patrick's Day in Ireland is the shamrock. Legend has it that St. Patrick used these three leaf clovers to explain the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, to the Irish people. Today, the shamrock is a symbol of Ireland and a common sight on St. Patrick's Day. Another popular symbol of St. Patrick's Day in Ireland is the leprechaun. These mischievous fairy-like creatures have been part of Irish folklore for centuries. They're said to be shoemakers who hide their gold at the end of a rainbow. The origins of the leprechaun in Irish folklore are shrouded in mystery and legend. Some scholars believe that the leprechaun is a descendant of Tua Jedan, the supernatural race of beings who ruled Ireland before the arrival of the Celts. And I greatly apologize how much I butchered that pronunciation. The leprechaun is often depicted as a small bearded man who wears a green suit and a hat. He's 
said to be a solitary creature who spends his time making shoes, hiding gold. In Irish folklore, the leprechaun is often associated with other fairy-like creatures, such as Banshee and the Puka. These creatures are said to be part of the Fae, or fairy culture. It has long been part of Irish mythology. One theory about the leprechaun's origin suggests that they were originally a type of guardian spirit who protected the sacred land of Ireland. And over time, they became associated with shoemaking and gold, and their image transformed into the familiar one we know today. Regardless of their origins, the leprechaun has been an enduring symbol of Irish culture in St. Patrick's Day. From the iconic image of the Lucky Charms serial mascot to countless leprechaun costumes worn on St. Patrick's Day, even a franchise of horror movies. The little green-clad shoemaker has become an integral part of the holiday festivities. As St. Patrick's Day grew in popularity in the U.S., it also began to spread to other parts of the world. Today, St. Patrick's Day is celebrated in countries across the globe from Australia to Zimbabwe. But how did this holiday, which began as a religious observance in Ireland, become so global? One key factor in the global spread of St. Patrick's Day was the mass immigration of Irish people to other parts of the world. In the 19th century, millions of Irish left their homeland to escape famine and poverty. Many of these immigrants settled in the United States. They helped to popularize St. Patrick's Day celebrations. As the Irish spread to other parts of the world, St. Patrick's Day celebrations followed. In Argentina, for example, St. Patrick's Day has been celebrated since the mid-19th century. Today, Buenos Aires is home to one of the largest St. Patrick's Day parades in the world. In Japan, St. Patrick's Day has been an increasingly popular holiday in recent years. This is partly due to the efforts of James Patrick Oy, an Irish businessman who moved to Japan in the 1970s. Oy began promoting St. Patrick's Day in a way to boost business for his Irish-themed pub. The holiday gradually caught on among Japanese people. St. Patrick's Day is also celebrated in countries with very little connection to Ireland. In South Korea, for example, St. Patrick's Day has become a popular holiday, with many young people dressing up in green and attending parties. Popularity in South Korea is largely due to the influence of K-pop, which has helped spread Western culture and traditions in the country. Of course, the global spread of St. Patrick's Day hasn't been without controversy. Some people argue that the holiday has become too commercialized, and its original religious meaning has been lost. Others point out that St. Patrick's Day celebrations can be exclusionary, and particularly for those who are not of Irish descent. Many don't even associate St. Patrick's Day so much with Irish heritage as they do with binge drinking, green beer, and Guinness. Despite these concerns, St. Patrick's Day remains a beloved holiday for many people around the world. Whether it's attending a parade, wearing green, enjoying a pint of Guinness, listening to Irish music. St. Patrick's Day is a time to celebrate Irish culture and heritage, as well as the diversity and richness of our global community. We should be reminded of the power of the culture and tradition to bring people together, even in the most difficult of times. Whether you're Irish or not, St. Patrick's Day is a day to celebrate the joys of life and the connections we share. 
of the Irish proverb says. In English, I won't butcher it in Gaelic. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And may the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.